welcome again to Women to Women. I'm Carol Paz, your hostess for tonight, and we have a very special, very special edition. We are breaking format. We're actually having uh, our guest do some music because she's gifted musically. So we're going to let you enjoy that as the program moves forward. But first, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Carpa Nevada LLC, importers of fine Portuguese olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and international teas, as well as Pete's famous Bass Chorizo here at Vila Bass Deli and Cafe. So I want to welcome our guest, June Joplin, and uh, her keyboarder a little bit later. So June, it's wonderful to have you. Thank, Thank you, you so Carol. Much for being it's nice here. to be here. You know, um, as I said, we're breaking format, and that's exciting. I hope for you it's exciting for us, and I'm just very appreciative that you would bring the keyboard, you would bring uh, Bob, your, your uh, musical partner there with you. And I'd like to, first of all, have you just explain to us, what's the name of your group when you perform? Me and Bobby McGee. All right. He's uh, Bob and I'm me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, are you a native Nevadan? I'm not, but I feel like one. I've been here about 15 years, so okay. I'm originally from Southern California. Southern California. How did you make your way into Nevada? What brought you here in the first place? Uh, covered wagon? No. Um, <laughs> I came up here with my uh, ex-husband and family to uh, help start a church in the valley. And oh. uh, anyway, that was, that was what originally brought me here to Carson City. So your musical bra background of the development of your voice, would you say it took place in church? Is that where you had Probably a lot of originally in church. It wasn't until I was in my early 30s that I uh, took a stab at some local theater back home mm -hmm. in Victorville and uh, got involved in that and some musical theater and stuff like that. So then when we moved up here, I was in charge of the drama department, of developing the drama department at the church. And okay. So now, is your whole family gifted with a, with a voice, with a musical uh responsibilities and with the musical gifts? Actually, I guess so. Yeah. My oldest son, he, he's got a good voice and my middle son is a drummer. Um, my youngest son is a, can sit, is a, got a great voice and Ooh. a very gifted piano player, self-taught. My daughter, my youngest has a beautiful voice and plays a little piano. So yeah. Isn't that something to be the whole family genetically has been <laughs> passed on, you know, with, with this gift. Now, were your We parents... could be the Partridge family. You could be. What was it like growing up in Southern California? Uh, well, it was pretty nice. I grew up in Altadena or Pasadena area, and I'm the baby of four. So, okay. um, Are you the only sister? No, I, I have my oldest sister and then two boys and then me. Okay. So there's um, that. And, uh, yeah, it was a pretty, um, pretty traditional upbringing, upbringing. Okay. you know, very uh, father knows best, leave it to beaver kind of thing. I okay. was the probably the rebel of the family. Everybody else pretty much minded their manners, but How me. so? <laughs> what were you oh, I just, I think I just liked, I think I just liked to push the envelope and wanted, uh, always wanted a little bit of adventure. Mm -hmm. I, it mm -hmm. looked more rebellious and mean spirited probably when I was young, growing up so conservative, yeah. but it wasn't really, no. it was just, I was just a little spirited. <laughs> what about your background, your training and your music? Where does that come from? I, I didn't, I've never really had any, just, just practice. And, you know, that's something that a lot of women, because the, the focus of our show is always to offer support and encouragement for women who are listening out there, who think all the time that if you don't have an educational background, you can't go anywhere. And you are the antithesis of that. You are absolutely saying, with pluckiness and a sense of a spirit, adventure, and practice, and, and a goal, a dream, that it can be accomplished, and that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's pretty much it. Actually, um, I was just at an event and talking about the um, that we don't, you know, you, you really, it, it takes, it doesn't take an education. There's nothing wrong with an education, mm -hmm. and that's great. Right. Um, I have a son graduated from college. That's, that's awesome. But um, it really is just, it's about your spirit and your passion, and you're just, I don't know, tenacity to put your mind towards something and, and try it and not be afraid. I think that that's mm -hmm. probably, you'd talk to me about what my passion is. And I think that the thing that I'm the most passionate about is, is people following their passion. And mm -hmm. that's a sense of fearlessness that it really takes. Um, the antithesis of love is not hate, it's, it's fear. And fear keeps mm -hmm. us from doing so much. It's a crippling It is very crippling. crippling. And, um, 
you know, I came out of, uh, I, I mean, I grew up in a really great family mm -hmm. and home, but when, when I got married, I, I ended up kind of in, you know, in an abusive situation and I don't want to focus on that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but getting out of that, right. um, with a passel of kids, <laughs> you know, um, in our society, there's a lot of things that are there that will say, oh, well, here, we'll take care of you. But I chose a path that was like, I'm going to take care of myself and figure out a life for my kids. Yes. And Kama Coffee, my business, that's what that birthed out of. And, you know, it probably shouldn't have lasted a year, let alone almost 12. Just uh, no education, no business experience as a homemaker, I, mm -hmm. you know. And you learn what you need to learn when you get there. You know, each step of the way, something's going to say, you need to know this now. And you're like, all right. And, uh, you know, and there's people, community that, that you learn. You figure out what you need to do next, and then you do it. And I think what you're hitting on here that's so important for all of us, June, it's men and women, but we're thinking, we're focusing on women, is not letting fear dominate your life. You can be in a set of circumstances that the rest of the world would say, She's finished. She'll never make it. She's got five children. She's a single parent. She has no uh, formal educational background. But you took that on, and you're saying that your place of business here in Carson City had a lot to do with the success of overcoming fear, with the success of raising your children. Did What made you choose the type of business, uh, comma coffee, that you have? Why, where did that come from? I think that, um, according to my mom, mm -hmm. it was always a dream. I don't remember having it as a dream when I was little. I really just wanted to be a wife and a mom. So I don't remember having those kinds of dreams. But different people in my life have told me that I did, mm -hmm. so I believe them. But um, a couple years ago, I was down in Southern California with my mom at in Newport at the Crab Cooker, which is her favorite restaurant. Mm -hmm. And Rubian, who owns it and has owned it for 50 years now, that she went to high school with, um, he was there. So we had this great lunch and everything like that. But I realized when I was there, I hadn't been there in years and years and years, that it was actually the thing that triggered that when I was a little mm -hmm. kid because it's eat lots of fish. It's a fish market and restaurant mm -hmm. in in Newport. And every chair is different. And it, it, it just has all, everything on the walls is cacophony of just stuff. And it's eclectic. <laughs> it's eclectic. And he plays the piano there. And he's just a character. And I, I think as a little girl, I was just completely like, when I grow up, I want this. Do you know why? Because I think that you know your personality is showing. You want to be who you are. You want to be yourself. And you want to be comfortable in that kind of environment that says, okay, this is June. I hope you like me. I hope you <laughs> like my spot. But that takes a lot of confidence, June, because the world would try and have you believe that if you're not like what they want you to be, you're not going to make it. Absolutely. And that doesn't have to yeah. be true. It's not true. In fact, it's actually the exact opposite is true, mm -hmm. that you will be happy, you will be successful in your life if you're living true to your own voice. That's yes. That's, yes. that's really the thing. And it, and it does take a, a sense of st stepping out and being bold about that. Very much so. Um, Where did the name Kama Coffee come from? How'd you think of that? My middle son and I were driving from the valley up and we were talking about silly names for the shop. And back home they had like the mall and the movies. It was really <laughs> ridiculous. And so we started there uh -huh. and then it was pretty much, it was like, you know, coffee miscellaneous, we were just, coffee, et cetera. It's like coffee, period. And then and he just said, comma, coffee. And I was like, oh, that's it. That was exactly it because comma is a pause. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a pause and it's like a, pay, a, a, a pause time. between two thoughts, a right, breath that you take, a time, time out. out. And that was the philosophy uh, that I wanted. And it was like, that was it. So. And it's worked ever since. Just like that, yep. You know, this sense of adventure that you have, we're going to talk about, because I cannot believe that a mother of five children, a businesswoman, would decide to go across the country doing something <laughs> very special. But what I'd like to do is just, um, uh, for our viewing audience, we can't get into the full story, but you made a decision recently about a very special trip that you want to take with Clinton, one of your sons. Why Clinton? Because I'd already had adventures with my other sons, so okay. that was such where as 
And to um, be very brief. Backpacked the Grand Canyon, climbed Mount Whitney, circumnavigated in Lake Tahoe in kayaks. and. You are an adventuresome spirit. You really are. Apparently. And you must take very good care of yourself okay, because that's, that's strenuous work, climbing. But before we let you tell that story about what you're about to do, I would love to have our audience, our viewing audience, just have the gift of your voice. And this gift that you have uh, can be found in various places, including your business establishment, right? Yes. 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 Um, and actually... Um, Bob and I play different places, uh, but um, I sometimes sing with the Mile High Jazz Band mm -hmm. and at Karma Coffee, and I'll be playing. I'll be singing with the Tahoe Dance Band at the Taste of Downtown. They'll be playing in the courtyard at Karma Coffee, and I'll be joining them for a few songs. And that comes up when June sixteenth. June sixteenth. Yeah. So um, you're in for a treat. Let's just take a break and listen to June. something informative and inspiring women to women every thursday a new guest and a new passion to inspire you your hostess carol pause interviews influential women of northern nevada your neighbors your friends these are the women who are making a difference in our community from helping those in need to running your favorite local businesses we give you their story we show you their passion thursdays at 7 p.m channel 15 for carson city and gardnerville channel 3 in reno sparks fernley fallon and lake tahoe Pets of the Homeless is a nonprofit, all volunteer organization that provides pet food and veterinary care to the homeless and less fortunate in local communities. With donations from the public, we're able to provide homeless shelters with crates, bowls, cleaning materials so that homeless with pets can come into homeless shelters and get the services that they need to get out of homelessness. If wildland fire is threatening your neighborhood, good access is essential for fast arrival of emergency responders. Address numbers should be reflective and at least four inches tall. Also, if your home or community has an electric gate, make sure your local fire department has key access or click to enter. Remove flammable vegetation and overhead obstructions from your driveway. Allow 13 and a half feet of vertical clearance and 10 feet on both sides. Working together. Visit livingwithfire.info for more tips to save your home. Are you looking for a healthier lifestyle? A more nutritious diet? Do you care about quality? If your answer is yes, or if you are just curious, come into Villa Basque Deli and Cafe right here in Carson City, Nevada. Discover fine Portuguese extra virgin olive oils. Vintage balsamic vinegars and a wide assortment of international health teas provided by distributor Carpa Nevada LLC. In addition to these terrific items, Villa Basque is also the home of Pete's famous Basque chorizo, handmade on the premises from Pete's secret family recipe. Satisfy your culinary curiosities, don't delay. It's impossible to replace anybody that you love. She was my, my great role model, my Grammy Keaton. It was pretty much of a shock for us when she got colon cancer. We were, none of us were prepared for that. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer of men and women over the age of 50. Just get screened, okay? If I can do it, you can do it, okay? Welcome back again. We've just heard a wonderful song from June. It had to be you, and we have another one coming up at the end of the show, so don't go anywhere. 
Um, you see the snap, you see the dazzle, you, you uh, hear the enthusiasm and the energy in June's voice. June, why did you pick It Had to Be You? I always like to do that song for my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. It's their song, and they've been together for 71 years. So Amazing. I'd always do that as a tribute for them. And I hope that when they see this show, they'll know exactly why it was in there. I'm sure it will. I'm sure they will. So let's move on to the adventure with Clint. What does this adventure uh, involve? <laughs> I'm, I'm almost hesitant to ask, but I'm going to ask it. <clears throat> well, I was surprised that no one took, told us that we were crazy. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the start. Um, well, when my son got out of the war, or got out of the military after mm -hmm. the war, he opened up Caterpillar's Hookah Lounge right next to Kama Coffee, and he ran that for a couple years, and then he sold it, and he moved up to Idaho. When he got up there, he got into horses. So mm -hmm. when I got the idea that I wanted, needed to have an adventure with him, um, I thought it should be something to do with horses. So uh, I asked him if he wanted to have an adventure with his mom, and he said, what'd you have in mind? I said, well, let's ride cross country to Wounded Knee, South Dakota. And, and at that point in time, had you ever ridden a horse before, really? Well, you know, the $8 an hour okay. variety, you okay. know, over, over a lifetime. I've yes. done that a few times. But um, no, not really. <laughs> not really. I didn't know anything about horses. I mean, you're talking about trail bosses. You're talking about the type of wagon. We're convoy. talking each of us on a horse and a trail horse. So there'll be three horses and us and um, his dog, Emmett. Good. And uh, so I, yeah, so I started learning, working out at a ranch a couple days a week to pay for some lessons. And then right. now it's paying for my horse and... Uh, it's, okay. a, it's an adventure already. Right. Now tell me, how do you go about selecting a horse if you really have not grown up in the horse world? Well, I, I, needed a, I originally thought that I wanted a wild Mustang, which mm -hmm. I learned really quickly was too green for anything that I needed. Mm -hmm. But um, I, knew, I wanted a horse like me, that was like me, that was small and efficient physically and uh, spirited, and, uh, but a good heart. Yes. And I don't know how you pick that out, but I happened to find one. It was a re rescue horse up yes. at Spanish Springs at a rescue ranch. And uh, he was the only horse I looked at. And he was I had my vet check him out. And he's the horse that I got. And he's what color all of is things. rusty? <laughs> well, he's kind of a rusty color. Okay, he's, a chest, right. he's a chestnut, um, which means his body and his mane and tail are kind of all the same color brown. Beautiful. And he's, how old is he? He's about 12. All right. And, which is a good age. Um, you know, I mean, I did some research and I asked around. Obviously, I've, right. I once once I delved into it, the world of horses and horsemanship and everything opened up to me, which was quite miraculous as well. Okay, so my next question is this. You've got Rusty. He's 12 years old. He's, he's in prime shape. But how do you and Rusty get into shape together to do this? He's, Rusty's got to have a good partner. That's you. That's okay. me, yeah. Um, well, as things happen in my world of magical mysteryness, um, a horse trainer walked into my shop one day, and um, so he really, he really has helped me out tremendously. And um, it's been a tremendous thing, gift for him, too, for getting back into horses. Mm -hmm. um, and I discovered Buck Brannaman accidentally on Netflix, and so... I've had the privilege of learning from scratch the, the way of the natural horsemanship. So um, Rusty needed, uh, he had a, a, l a few trust issues, but not mm -hmm. much. He was real willing, um, mm -hmm. but he needed somebody that was a patient, patience and loving, and that yes. was me. And that's what I need, and that's what he needs. So we have a really awesome relationship, and, you know, he's been training, and I've been training. And then to condition, right. like, actually that is just a lot of hours in the saddle and riding, riding him. Okay, when you say hours in the saddle, what does that mean distance-wise? What does it mean hour time-wise? Um, and where do you go? Well, he's out at East Lake, East Lake in Washoe, and so you can pretty much go anywhere out of there. I've done a couple of endurance rides, not on him, because he wasn't I trained yet, but um, I've done a 25-miler and a 50-miler, in a day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um so i'm really in the in the on the journey we'll need to average about 25 miles a day and and this trip is going to take you from where to where what what point to what um point? probably we'll start outside of reno 
And then we'll end at Wounded Knee or Pine Ridge Reservation by Wounded Knee in South Dakota. Okay, so... One way. We're only going one way. (laughs) We're trailering back. (laughs) Okay, so on this this, um, expedition, are you responsible for anything else other than yourselves, your horses, the back... The, the pack horse, okay, and the dog. Are you taking anything or anybody else with you? No, you're that's not, it. You're not herding cattle or anything no. like that? Okay, all right. <laughs> no. City Slickers is appealing, though, but no, we're, we're, no, no cows. Just us. All right. So with your daughter, what have you done with her or will do with her or thinking about doing with her? Is she ever envious of her brothers and all the adventures? Oh, well, her adventure's her coming. She's not as much of an outdoors person. Okay. So... Um, I can't tell because I can't I can't say what the adventure is I have planned for her. All right. It's something after she graduates. All right. So now, June, as a single mom, this has been a real challenge over the years, I know. And there are a lot of us out there who are a single parent. What are some of the the major goals that you always wanted as a mom for your kids? And how did you go about trying to establish with six of you a framework around your lives? Certainly, Kama Coffee helped provide a framework. Did the kids work there at all? Yes, different ones of them have worked at different times. All okay. of them have not, but um, they have. It's because of the way Kama Coffee is, and it's mm-hmm. like a living room. It's been, it is our living room. It's okay. our core. We moved around a lot, um, housewise, but mm-hmm. Kama Coffee was really the centerpiece. The, it's of the your centerpiece coffee. of our lives, which. Um, is awesome. And now, I mean, I've got grandkids and my oldest grandson, you know, the last time he was up last summer, he wanted to work. I I put an apron on him and he did dishes and bus tables (laughs) and stuff like that. I was like, I never thought I'd see that. Um, You don't look like you have five children or have grandchildren. I've got to compliment (laughs) you you. on that. Very (laughs) much, very much. So what are some of those challenges as a mom that you've had to face that probably uh, viewers out there are saying, wow, I mean, I've got three kids out there. I've got seven kids out there. Maybe there's something I can learn from June as a mom that I need to be listening to. I don't know. Um, Love. Lots of love. Lots of love. Mm -hmm. Um, Patience, a sense of humor, humility, a willingness to say that you're you're wrong and you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think intuitively, though it wasn't really the way I was raised, but... I didn't have any real aspirations for my kids, like, oh, you know, you need to grow up and be this or anything mm-hmm. like right. that. Right. Um, but just, I thought, I thought my perspective on being a parent was that it was my job to help them figure out who they are mm-hmm. and to facilitate mm-hmm. that the best I can, mm-hmm. and um, to help them explore that so that they live true to who they are created right. to be. And if you knew my kids. I think that that's what they're what they they're would. doing. They're all very creative and talented, and they're very unique. They all love each other. Mm-hmm. I feel very blessed um, that they love each other and love hanging out together, and we have a great time together. Because your parents had such a long marriage together, was that an influence? Do you think on you and on your children? Absolutely. Too? Family is family's number one. Mm-hmm. Family. Um, mm-hmm. And you know you got differences, and my si- my siblings and I, you know, we're all very different, but we get together and we love each other. And we have a good time. And I can imagine this extended family is, <laughs> you know, it's quite numerous. It's tremendous, yeah. <laughs> Where do you get together? Do they come to uh, Kama Coffee anytime to sit down as a group and just enjoy the store, or do you go back to Southern California? Where do these family reunions take place? Usually, usually at my mom and dad's house. Okay. They uh, they live in uh, Southern California, up in Big Bear. Mm-hmm. So they live in the mountains. It's kind of a mini version of Tahoe, and uh, in a house that my dad built. And my mom's an artist, and she did um, all the stained glass and the art. I mean, it's it's amazing mausoleum or museum to my mom and yes. dad, and he kept adding on as we kept making babies. (laughs) So it's a big, beautiful home, and we Uh, all get together there. So uh, it's what you're saying is that a foundation for children is very important to have, and sometimes that foundation is found or is a part of extended family. Mm -hmm. Uh, It can be grandparents. It can be a a mother that they see working, producing. 
um, not giving up her responsibility or, or going into despair because she is now a single parent with five children. Absolutely. And it's I, also community. I mean, the family, because I live far away from yes. family now, um, you know, there's a lot of community. My, my son had a lot, of, you know, my, my youngest son had a lot of dads. I mean, there was a lot of people, mentor dads that stepped yes. in. Yes. And I mean, my, my daughter, being the only girl, she had a lot of sisters from all the girls that work at Kama mm -hmm. Coffee. And so, you know, that, that's family too. And they, they come to our house and they stay. And I mean, that's, you know, so it's not, if you don't have blood family, Mm. You you make family. That's right. And you allow people to love you and you allow yourself to love those people and depend on them and let mm -hmm. them help you. And that's family. Mm -hmm. So uh, I usually don't bring politics at all ever into the program unless the guest happens to be a politician of some sort. But I remember Hillary Clinton. Definitely it takes say, a village. <laughs> it takes a village to raise a child. And there's a lot of truth in that. I used to say that when the first years of Kama Coffee, I said, it takes a village to raise me. I, I didn't <laughs> know what I was doing. It takes a village to keep the business going. It does. It, absolutely. Yeah. And the more connections, the more relationships that you have that are yeah. positive in a community, not only for your business and for yourself, but for your children. They grow up in a positive environment. Which it really a gave lot them a sense do. of being belonging and being yes. connected and and. In, important that a place where they could express themselves mm -hmm. and have an identity and they it they've each been able to take stuff out of that that's helped them in their lives that's well let's cool. hear another thing from their mother okay uh there's another song out there waiting and it's a it's a snappy one and it says a whole lot about you as a person so let's take a listen again Well, we want to thank you again, June. That was a delightful song. And that's, thank you. that has a lot of your personality in it. I love it. I love it. And I want to thank our, our listeners. I want to thank our viewers. And remember, we have a special place that you can go to, womenofnevada at gmail.com. If you have comments, if you have questions, if you have uh, insights that you'd like to pass on to us, we'll read those on the air. And for those that we choose, we have uh, a very nice gift, okay, to be sent out to you. So don't hesitate to let us know what you think of the program. And we'd like to thank our sponsors, Carpa Nevada, LLC, uh, importers of fine Portuguese olive oil, balsamic vinegars, and international teas, as well as Pete's uh, Basque Chorizo, okay, here at Vila Basque Deli and Cafe. So until we see you next week, we have a brand new guest, and we want to say thanks again, June, very much. Thank you for having Wonderful me. Wonderful program. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm.